City strife. Horses, chicks, and dogs, they are my neighbors. I cook and sun spin and move the horses in to the barn. Then time to move them out again. Red barns, green pastures, beautiful my houses. The view I see each day when I arise. This light it pleases me. It is plain to see I'm living my bucolic life. Hello everybody, welcome back. So uh, last video I went through a process using this pattern here on creating a pants pattern that will actually fit. And so this time I'm actually going to make up the pants. All right. So if you haven't seen it already, I'll try to post a card or however that stuff works. I'm still figuring that out. So you can link to that if you haven't seen it yet. I'm going to use my pattern that I adjusted in that video and trying to follow their directions. This pant pattern, it looks like it's meant to be slightly shorter, okay, than a full length pant. So that stylish ankle-ish look. P me personally, I like them a little bit longer. So I'm taking up my pant pattern by one inch, which is a lot less than I usually do because I'm shorter than their standard, uh, but it should work out. Also, um, the fabric that I'm going to be using is a wool. It is this gray wool here. It's like a suit weight, so it's fairly lightweight, which is very nice. I have pre-treated it and my version of pre-treating wool is I will serge the raw edges so it doesn't unravel and fluff it all out, put it in my dryer and get a big old bath tile and soak it with water and put it in the dryer with it and then I'll just run it until the towel is dry and that throws itself against the wool and it makes it nice and soft and hopefully um, it's kind of like tempering it in my opinion so that I can be safe to go ahead and use it and it's not going to freak out the first time that it needs to get cleaned. Okay. Hopefully I won't mistakenly throw it in the washer and dryer, but you never know. Things happen. So, um, there were two pattern pieces that I did not cut out when I was doing the fitting video and that was the facings. There are two facings for this. So I'm going to tip the camera down and show you how I'm going to fit those facings to correspond with my pattern that I made. And um, I have actually already cut out the legs, the two main legs. So this is just a very basic pattern. It's got a dart in the front, a dart in the back, a center back zipper, which is fun, and our facings. Now the facing I am not cutting out of the wool. I'm going to cut the facing out of like a broadcloth because I just don't want wool snugged in right up next to my waist. You know, that's a little uncomfortable. So by making my facing out of a different fabric, I think that that's going to be a lot more comfortable. So let me tip the camera down. We'll get started. Okay, so this is my front piece here and this is my front facing and I'm going to need to make this fit on this, but it has to fit on after the dart has been folded. So I'm just going to quickly up here at the very top fold and pin this dart. Uh, so it is laying nice and flat here. Okay, and that makes this curve more and you can see that this piece is very curvy this way. Now also on this piece, the center front is the fold line. Okay, on this piece here, the center front is 5 eighths of an inch in from the edge. Okay, so I went ahead and made a little line right here, 5 eighths of an inch in. Okay. And I'm not really worried about all of this down here. That's totally off. It's just at the 5 8 inch mark right here that I want to make sure I have that dart pinned correctly. So if I lay my facing here so it matches up at that 5 8 7 inch and kind of sort of, because this is going to be curved a little more, bend it out 
Okay, I can kind of see through this tissue paper where that cutting line is underneath it. So I'm not gonna cut it yet, I'm just gonna draw it. And I can see that that waistline cutting line is right about at the size 16 point at the top and then it flares out to between 16 and 18 on the bottom. Okay, I have it marked, but you know, the whole measure twice thing, we're gonna do it one more time just to make sure something did not go completely wrong. So the other thing is, for some reason, this notch on the facing is not matching up perfectly with these notches. There's two notches right there. And I think the one, um, I don't even know. I don't even know. There's two notches here. There's one notch here. It's not matching up exactly. So I'm kind of ignoring those right now. I'm not too sure exactly what's going on there, but I'm just gonna place it here tip the edge again just to make sure that I didn't put anything off and yeah I can see that is good. So that's going to be my new cutting line for this facing. Okay right there. So now I need to take this pin out because I will be needing to mark all of these dart positions on here and get my back piece and I need to do the exact same thing on the back and you can see the back it does have a dart so I'll make take off all these pins at the top make that dart um, again center back is 5 8 of an inch in but this is not cut on a fold so we can line up the edges let me go ahead and just make that dart and I'll be right back Okay, so I've got my center back and you can see center back on my back facing is 5 8 of an inch in because this is not cut on the fold, right? And center back on my back piece is 5 8 of an inch in. So we are in business. I can just lay the two cut edges up against each other and I have pinned my dart and just like last time, I'm just kind of walking it around, matching up the top here. And, hmm, my back is in a totally different cut edge position on this side than it was last, the other side, but that's okay, because my, my body is not standard, and neither is yours. Nobody's actually is. So I'm gonna, just like last time, double checking it, making sure everything is lining up, and yep, that's it. So that's going to be my new cutting line here. So on my front piece, that cutting line was about 3 eighths of an inch in. On this one, it's out here. But that's okay. That's just the way it's going to be. So there you go. So I'm going to need to cut two of these out of like a black broadcloth or something like that. Well, I could not find a plain black broadcloth I wanted to use, but I found this black calico, and I think that's gonna be fun, you know, just for an inside band. You know, it's been pre-washed and all of that. So that's what I have cut these out of. So what I need to do is, um, I'm gonna get started, well, this one is face up here, so that's the one I'm gonna get started with. Transferring markings from my um, pattern piece onto my tissue paper from my tissue paper onto my fabric is what I need to say now there is a dot down here which should mark the bottom of the zipper this should call for a seven inch zipper and let me double check it uh, does it calls for a seven inch zipper and a hook and eye now I had to extend my back, but I think I'm gonna be okay as far as being able to pull it on with a seven inch zipper. So let me go look at my stash and see what I can find. All right, so I just have a basic regular seven inch zipper, not invisible or anything like that. And I think that's gonna work well. So if I take my little bottom, that dot here and line it up where the stopper is, Okay, this is going to be about an inch or so below the cut edge, but there is going to be a hook and eye above it. That should work out well. So if you haven't seen before, I'm going to punch out this circle. These are already punched out, but basically I put a piece of leather under the tissue paper on top of the fabric. Use my little hole punch to punch it out, and then I am using my white 
again my white heat erasable pen to just reach through and mark where those points are. Well, since the pen was not going to work too well on this, I just went back to the old chalk pencil and that seems to work pretty well. So the side that I am marking my darts on is going to be the wrong side of my fabric. Okay, um, I just grabbed my little chalk dial marker thing to connect the dots on my dart because that seems to work pretty well. So I'm going to mark the dots, um, the darts the same on both of my front pieces, both of my back pieces. So since the back pieces and the front pieces are very similar, I'm going to show you what I'm going to do on this one and then just pretend we're doing all four at the same time, both fronts and both backs. So I have my dart indicated here and I'm being kind of gentle playing with this because I don't have it surged. I don't have it stay stitched or anything at this point, but I want to get this dart made up quickly. So I put a pin down one dot, back up the other one there. The same with this middle one, down in one dot and back up in the other. So I can just push them through and pinch the very edge and that's going to give me a nice fold line. Okay. And I'm going to anchor all of these in so that fold line is very stable. Now when I sew this, again being very gentle, you don't stretch anything out of sorts. What I'm going to do is start out here on the outside edge and come straight in to the very edge. Since my fabric is thick enough it can hide it, I will be back stitching with the edge of my dart, you know. And then once that is done, these darts, um, I'm, I want to do this before I serge around it because I want to serge over the dart only once. The darts are being pressed towards the center, towards the crotch seam, okay? So over here where this swoopiness is, uh, turn it back this way, this dart is going to be pressed this way, all right? Once I have that sewed, press it this way. So it looks like that. When all of that is done, then I'm going to come back and search all the way around this piece just to protect it so nothing is going to fray, okay? But when I serge it, I'm going to serge this side over where it needs to be. So let me go ahead and do all four pieces that way and I will be back shortly. So before I get uh, too far ahead, I do need to put interfacing on my facing pieces. And what I am going to be using, turn this the right way here, is this one. It is called featherweight. It's actually more of a medium weight. You know, words can be deceiving. But that's what I'm going to be using. So I'm going to go ahead and fuse it onto uh, both of these and this one. Remember, this one is cut on a fold, so it's one long piece. All right, so if you've never put on interfacing before, I'm just going to show you my way, you know lots of ways. Um, so this is going to be the back piece and you need to make sure that you keep track of which piece is which. I got my centers here and actually I need to put them upside down like this. What I like to do is actually iron my fabric first. I don't want to stretch it out. I more just want to get any wrinkles out because you don't want to fuse interfacing to a wrinkled fabric because that's no good. So now that I have it here, I'm just going to place my little interfacing piece on top. And if it kind of peeks out a little bit, I'll just trim it off later. And then I'm going to set my iron on top. Hit it with some steam. I know my camera is going to steam up. Um, but I just move, lift up and move my iron. I'm not going back and forth because I don't really want to stretch out anything down there. I just want to Sorry about that. Spend some time making sure all those little dots are fused. And if you look, like right here, you don't see any dots. That's melted. But down here, you can kind of see them still. I need to keep going until I don't see any more of those little dots. And this interfacing is a little bit heavier than what I normally use. So it's going to take me a little bit longer to get it. Okay, but once I can feel that it's on there pretty securely, I am good. So let me go ahead and get the other parts of it done and I'll meet you back at the table. 
All right, so with the interfacing put onto my facing pieces, it's time to get started sewing the pant legs together. So what I'm doing is I have a front right side to right side with a back, okay? You can tell the back piece because the crotch length is a whole lot longer. And so what we're gonna do is just, I'm gonna do it in, in two separate steps. First, I'm gonna do this inseam. So carefully match it up. There is a notch right about here. You know, match it all up, stitch it at five eight seven inch, <coughs> excuse me, and then press this seam allowance open. Also, we're gonna do the same thing on this side, on the outside side seam. Match the entire thing up, stitch it at five eight seven inch, and then press this seam allowance open. I'm gonna do that for both of my legs. So I've got my one leg pressed open, and I wanted to show you, I'm just sticking a seam roll, sleeve roll inside of here because I don't want to press any creases into the legs of my pants at this point. You know, who knows when they're completely done. I might, I haven't decided yet. But at this point, I don't want to, so I can just move my little sleeve roll down the leg here, open it up, and press it open down here. Okay, and I do have a very old video, well not very old, a few years old, on my channel on making a sleeve roll and a pressing ham. You know, I like mine because it's got a flat bottom and it stands up on its own. On making these yourself if you don't have any available, you know, they're highly, highly useful tools. Okay, so I have both legs, uh, the inseam, the side seam, sewed together, pressed open. And remember this dot over here where the zipper is supposed to start? I'm just gonna stick a little straight pin there so I don't lose track of it. Plus, that'll help me remember that that is the back. So I'm gonna leave this the way it is, but the other leg, I'm gonna turn so it is right side out, okay? And then I need to get the inseam here on top of my right side out leg. This one is inside out. And I am just going to put this right side out one inside. And it might not be perfectly straight down there at the bottom. That is okay. What I need to start with though is to make sure that I can pin this top part here of my inseam. I know it's dark, so I'm just gonna stick that pin right there so you can see it, um, with the inseam here of the one that is right side out. So I'm gonna match up that seam line carefully, and I'm gonna pin it on both sides so that that seam allowance will stay open. Okay, now on this back, remember here is our little dot. I'm gonna go ahead and pin it up to the top. Um, here, there is also a notch that is just below this little dot, okay? You know you can't see it, it's right around here, okay? What I need to do, oops, one of my pins just fell out, hang on. I need to pin it very carefully from the inseam here up to this dot that marks the bottom of the zipper. Okay, we're only going to stitch from that dot down and all the way up the front. We're not gonna be stitching where the zipper is yet. And, okay, so here's the thing. That's how the instructions say to do it. Let me tell you, what I am going to do is I am going to stitch it, but from this point up here, down to this dot, I'm gonna be doing a long basting stitch, okay? So just so that I remember, I'm gonna put a letter B there, okay? I don't know if you can see, B for basting. So that's gonna be from this point down to this point. At five eighths of an inch, the zipper, they only want you to do just a very simple center placed zipper. So that's what we're gonna do. You know, but they're going to want you to do that in a different step. So I think that since we're going to have to do it anyway, we might as well do it right now. Then in the front, again, matching up 
the top, matching up the notch, which is right around here. Throw something on the floor, apparently, and here. Okay, so what I'm going to do, once again, is stitch top front, come on, up here, all the way to the dot, which is right here. Do a couple back stitches and then go forward from this point the rest of the way up with a longer stitch, a more like a basting stitch or a gathering type stitch, your longest stitch on your machine that way. Then I'm going to come back and at the point where your notch is or where the curve starts to really get to this underneath area, I'm going to come in and do a second row of stitching just inside the seam allowance about an eighth of an inch. So the first seam is at about five eighths. The second one will be at about half an inch. But again, that is just from the notch all the way to the notch over here. Okay, I will be right back. All right, so I've got my two rows of stitching in. Hopefully you can see, I've got two rows going on there. And at the very bottom, um, Let's see, I start my row up here and I finish my double row right here, okay? I'm going to move in at least an inch from where those start. And what they want you to do in the instructions is then trim it out close to this inner row of stitching. What I'm going to do is grab my pinking shears, okay? And if... This is where I start my double row. I'm gonna move in about an inch and trim there and just trim out about half of the seam allowance. I'm not getting terribly close to um, my second row of stitching, okay, if you can see, but enough that it's gonna take some of the bulk out and give me a little more flexibility at the bottom of my crotch area, but hopefully the two rows of stitching will keep it from wanting to, you know, split. So what I need to do now is the part above where I just made that trim, um, I need to press these seam allowances open. So I'm going to get my sleeve roll in there and just come on, press this open, do the same thing on the other side, press that open. And then we're going to go ahead and get the zipper put in. Okay, so I've got everything pressed open. Um, what I need to do right now is go ahead and pick open the stitches for my center back where I have it basted closed um, all the way down to the dot. And I transferred my little dot marking here so I can see it. Okay, so I'm going to pick this open here. And then once that is done, I need to open up these folds here and I'm going to run a row of, they call it e-stitching, you know it's basically a slightly, it's not long 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 like a gathering stitch but it's not super short, you know Goldilocks length stitch and I'm going to run that at a half inch seam allowance all the way around the top, okay? That's going to allow me to kind of cinch it in a little bit if I need to when I'm putting on my facing piece. Welcome to another day. So today I'm going to hopefully finish these pants because there's not a lot to do. I need to get the zipper put in and they want you to do this before you put the facing on. So I'm going to change things just a bit. First of all, what they want you to do is go ahead and base this and press it open. And I already sewed it, but unfortunately I picked out those stitches. I don't know why. Don't ask me why. But I'm going to go ahead and put them back in just so that I can follow along with their instructions on here. Um, I don't know that it's completely necessary, but we're going to do that. So give me a minute. Let me put those stitches back in. If you're watching this and you're following along, don't pick those stitches out yet. Okay? Save yourself a step. Okay, I kind of needed to iron my pants anyway because... This morning I came in and my cat was laying on them and well I didn't iron them too well you can see there's wrinkles but I had all my sleeve rolls on my ironing board and I guess it made her upset so anyhow what I'm going to do a little bit different is the instructions are going to want you to hand baste the um, zipper on and I'm going to use of course my 
double-sided water-soluble basting tape. So I need to put this tape on the right side of my zipper, the side with the zipper pull, and I'm gonna put it on both sides, but I wanna put it on the outside edge here. So if I can show you with the right side up here, I'm gonna start it at the little stop, and I'm putting it along the outside edge of both sides of my zipper up to this point where the upper stop is, okay? I'm gonna trim that off and do the other side. Okay, so this is a totally different topic, but I had someone ask me recently how long it takes to edit a video. And um, I gotta tell you, editing the video is the shortest part. Because if you are ever filming for YouTube or whatever, a project, every single step you do. You have to stop and make sure the camera is on, the microphone is on, the batteries are all good. And I can tell you the battery for my camera light, my camera um, microphone piece, my auxiliary microphone piece, and the camera itself all have different lifespans and they all go dead at different points. And so it's like every time you're going to do a step, it's at least five minutes of fiz fidgeting and checking and making sure that everything is good before you can even turn the camera on. Oh, and making sure that you don't have any music playing so you don't have a copyright strike and all of these things. It's like, I enjoy the process, but I'm just letting you know, it takes a while, not just because, you know, sewing takes a while, but going through and double checking every little thing. And you've seen, there's been a lot of times where I finish a big part and realize my one of my microphone batteries had died or one of them wasn't turned off or if you double click on something, it goes to mute instead of to on and things. So things happen, that's life. We carry on and I have both sides of my tape on. So what I need to do and what they're gonna show on the instructions is that you're going to, they're gonna have you baste it just to the flap, opening up the flap like this. Well, since I'm using a tape, it's going to do the same thing. So what I need to do is pull the paper backing off and this is a pain. I will tell you 100% it's a pain. If you get started with a little pin just to get that going, that helps. Oh, and this, I had a fight with a wire brush on a drill yesterday. The wire brush won that battle, but don't worry, I did win the war, so all is good um, but you can see I just have to kind of pick it to get it started once you get it started and you can hold the sticky part down onto the zipper part itself well then the paper's just going to pull off and all that's good there okay so let me get this one off here and then we'll place it on the seam allowances Okay, so here is my tapes. This is the right side. Okay, so I'm gonna put it right side down and I wanna line up this bottom, I'm looking at the wrong side here, this bottom stopper with that dot on my pants where the bottom stopper should be. So let me just kind of bend this so we can see that that is about right. And I wanna make sure my teeth are lined up with that center seam. So I'm just kind of rolling it down there. Okay, and I'm gonna let my little tab poke upwards at this point, okay. Press it down really good so it's not gonna wanna go anywhere, all right? So on their instructions, because they had you um, hand baste it, they're gonna want you to machine stitch it along the hand basting line. I, of course, do not have a hand basting line uh, where is my zipper? Okay, so this is the wrong side. This is my right side. So when I'm gonna stitch mine on, what I need to do is actually, at the very top up here, I'm gonna pin those two top little pieces just so that they're gonna wanna behave. I'm not actually gonna be stitching way up here in the seam allowance, but I want them to I'll pull it closer to the camera so you can see. Kind of curl in and hold that position, okay? Just pinched in just a bit so that it's not going to want to go anywhere. And those pins did go all the way through, okay? So 
because I made sure while I was stitching this or while I was placing it on with the tape that it was going to line up really carefully. I need to pull my little threads out here with my seam line. Really, you could look at either side when you go to stitch it on, which is nice, but I'm going to watch the right side. I want to do my stitching where I can see how the final product is going to look. So I'm going to go to my machine. I'm just going to start at the top and because it's glued on basically, you can go up and down. Sometimes if you just have it pinned, you have to go the same direction both times, but since it's like basted on or taped on, you can go both directions. Okay. So I'm just going to use this as my seam guide, stitch it um, somewhere between an eighth of an inch and a quarter inch out from there, probably closer to a quarter inch from, from the center line all the way down, over and back up. And I want to cross over where that dot is. And I can't really see it that well. It is right here. So what I'm going to do is just to transfer that over, I'm going to poke a pin straight through there, put a little dot here. It's going to brush off, you know, shortly, but at least that way I'll be able to see it from the outside as I'm stitching. All right, so this is the outside here. I have my stitches going all the way around and I think I left my stitch like a little too long. Um, if you can see in here, it's on there. It's going to hold it securely, but I think it's a slightly longer than I would like, but it's strong thread. I might just leave it. But what I wanted you to see is even though I was lining it up when I put my tape on and lining up the edge of my presser foot with this seam line as I was sewing it, if you look at the tape side, it's a little bit wonky, you know, not a whole lot, but a little bit. But that's okay. That's the inside. It's going to hold it. So at this point, are they going to allow us to open up? Yeah, it says remove basting is their last step on here. So what I need to do now is go ahead and open up those basting stitches that we put in here before. And once I do, I'll make sure that the zipper, you know, is working and lined up and then we can move forward. You know, while I'm picking this out, I have decided that, you know, once I get this picked, I'm going to come back and do another row of stitching um, on top of this or yeah, pretty much on top of it, just with a smaller stitch line. It'll double reinforce it and everything just because, you know, at this point it's easier to do it now than later. And so there you go but I just wanted to let you know that's what I'm doing. Just double stitching it one more row on top of the other. So it shouldn't really look any different um, in the finished look. It's just, I'm going to know personally that I have an extra row in there. But at this point, if I unzip it, it unzips. If I zip it back up, it zips up. Um, but yeah, let me go ahead and do that really quick and then we'll go on. Okay, so I've got my second row of stitching on there and it wasn't quite right on top of the other one. Um, it ended up being in places like a sixteenth of an inch over in places and places it was. Honestly, I wasn't stressing too much. I should have put a narrow foot onto my machine instead of a standard foot and it'd been easier to guide it. But I was thinking while I was over there, I mean, this is going to be fine and it's what the pattern calls for. Um, but if I was to do this over, I think that I would prefer to use a heavy duty invisible zipper instead of a standard zipper back here, you know, because that would just really clean up that back seam look and everything. Um, and I think that that would be really pretty. The only problem, and it's not really a problem if your pants fit correctly, like these should, if your pants are really tight, a seam that is under a lot of stress could be a problem with an invisible zipper because in general they're a little bit weaker, but they have different strengths. Some are more heavy material. The coils are more of a heavy material than others. So that's why I say a heavy duty invisible zipper. But you know, we're going to carry on here that just chatting about that. What I need to do now is get my facing pieces and sew them together. So um, actually before I do that, there's a couple things I want to mark on here and I definitely want to mark my center front. 
So I'm just going to lay my pattern piece on here and draw that line down right there. CF for center front. Okay. Um, the center back, like we said, it's going to line up all the way. At least it should with the cut edge and that's where the zipper is. So that's not a big deal. But that line I really needed to put on there. So with right sides together here, move you up. This is my front and yes, my interfacing is peeking out. That's okay. We'll deal with that. And then you want to put your back pieces here and making sure that you have the center back. And I know it's the center back because it's a 90 degree angle one, but also this is on the straight of grain at the center back. Over here, it's cut on the bias. So if you look at the threads, you can see, okay. So I'm just gonna pop this on over here. So both of these sides at five eighths of an inch, eighths of an inch and press this seam allowance open. Okay, so with that done, actually I'm gonna cut off some of this bottom seam allowance like that so it's not so much in the way when I have to finish the bottom edge. Just get that out of the way here. I'm going to start out by matching up my center front seam with my center front line that I just drew. I'm going to use clips because that interfacing is a little bit of a pain to pin through. So I got that one pinned and come over and pin the side seam. Now remember they had us put what they were calling e-stitches all the way around the top. So if once you have your landmarks all pinned together, it looks like your pants are a lot uh, whiter than your facing. That's where that e-stitch is going to come in. On the front, there is a little bit of ease there. Hmm. Okay, let me try the side. So I am going to pull in those ease stitches, just a hair here in the front. Um, what I'm going to do is get one of my little pins and at about halfway here, I'm just going to pick one of these threads, put my pin through it and give it a slight tug. Okay. And then spread that little ease out all the way over. Well, going through the the dart is a little tricky. I may have to... No, I think I can work all the ease in just between the dart and the side seam. I think that will work. If you can see, I have not pressed this yet. You can kind of see little puckers on here. So what I'm going to do is, you know, kind of get my edge lined up and just eyeballing it, try to even out the amount of, of gathering ease, whatever, so it's even across here. Then I'm going to move my camera for a second and put a whole bunch of steam on here. I'm not really pressing down. I'm just kind of hovering with a lot of steam. Okay. Move that aside and then I'm pulling it, stretching it out this way. Okay. And what that's going to kind of do is doing that and padding it, that and padding it. It's going to pull those, th instead of threads like this, it's going to pull them out like that, okay? So that they're going to want to be closer together. And this is a fairly lightly woven wool, so it works a lot easier. If you have a really, really thick wool, it's a little bit more difficult. And then you can come back, put more steam on it, and then I just kind of pat it down so it learns that that is its new home and to be happy there. And if you can see, all of those bumps are gone. Well, up here in the seam allowance, it's there, but at the stitching line, it's all gone. It's perfectly smooth underneath and it's all worked in. So that's one of the wonders of, you know, wool. It's fabulous that way. And not just wool. Sometimes you can do this with other wovens. I just pinned it to my ironing board. Um, you can do it with other wovens too. I sat down at my machine and realized I almost made a tragic mistake. Let me tell you my tragic mistake. Remember I was saying, oh, center back is five eighths of an inch in. That five eighths of an inch point should be lining up with where your zipper is. Not over here, I had it placed wrong. So if this is my center back right there, that needs to be out here. See where the zipper is right there? Okay, I'm basically gonna need about half inch to five eighths of an inch sticking out right here on this side, all right? 
So let me go ahead and get to that clipped on and because of that now I am going to need to come back and work in a little bit of ease here. If you can see there's a little bit there I need to work in. So same way I did in the front just doing that on the back but make sure that your facing is sticking out. Okay anyway once I get that then I'll go ahead and make my stitching line. Okay so it's all stitched on here and what we need to do now is understitch it but you know this is very stiff up here and the curve is a little off so what I'm going to do is um, take off about half of that seam allowance with some pinking shears just, I don't want to take it too close to the stitching just enough that it's going to flex a little bit more um, and that's going to help with the whole understitching process so I'm ending up with a little more than half of my seam allowance when I'm all done. But before you understitch, what you really, really need to do is make sure that these two stitching lines are level, okay? With this open like this, I'm butting up my two seam allowances, are those two coming straight into each other? Okay, can you see that this one is just ever so slightly higher? ever so slightly higher. So what I'm going to do is on this side, I want it to end at the exact same level as this side. If I stick a pin through, you can see it ends right there. So what I'm going to do is right now come back and putting a little dot right there. And I'm just going to do an extra little row of stitching right here like this and blending it in right here just to make sure that that's going to be at exactly the same level as this one. It's a lot easier to do this than to pick this out and raise that one. Okay, so let me go ahead and make that little row of stitching right there and then we'll understitch it. Okay, so now that is done. So I have a row of stitching on there. As soon as I iron it, you'll be able to see it better, but trust me, it's in there. So now for understitching. What I need to do is stitch it on the private side. So I'm going to open this up. So I'm looking at it with my facing on the right, my pants on the left. I want my, in, my seam allowances to be under the facing, okay, up here. And I'm going to want to run my row of understitching on this side here, okay right about a sixteenth or an eighth of an inch in, just a bit. And that way it's going to go through the facing, but it's also going to go through all of the seam allowance along this entire edge, um, holding it flat like this. Okay, so you can kind of see my understitching right here. And while I was over there, I went ahead and just surged the bottom edge. I think the instructions are going to want you to turn it under like that and stitch it but this fabric is so lightweight I didn't really want an extra crease or seam there. So at this point what I need to do is fold it under and I'm going to press this top edge so it's going to lay nice and flat before I even start dealing with all of this out there. Okay so I've got it pressed down so that it's got a nice edge on top and one of the things understitching does is it kind of pulls all of this stuff up here towards the hidden side. So when you look at it from the right side, you're not going to see any stitching. You're going to have a really nice clean edge on top and all that's pulled under, which is really nice. What I did is I pinned it at strategic points like at the dart allowance there, the side seam and things. And I'm going to get a matching thread, needle and thread and just stitch it to just like the seam allowance here and the top just to the dart allowance in this. Um, just at a few key points just to anchor it so that this facing is going to want to stay down. And the other thing we need to do is deal with this edge over here. So if you can see this is what it's looking like right now and I need to turn this under Okay, like that. Turn it under like this. And I'm just going to tack it down at the very bottom right here to the tape and the little allowance here. Okay, just to keep that secure. This part I'm actually going to leave open at this point. I don't think that's going to hurt anything and I'll still be able to get to my zipper teeth. 
Okay, so I've got my facing tacked down over here at the very beginning of my zipper opening. And also at all of the little dart side seam, things like that. So it's not going to go anywhere. But what I need to do now is put the little hook and eye in. And they're going to want you to do this from the inside. So I zipped up my zipper. I'm going to look at it this way. Okay, so I'm back down to a regular size hook and eye. So we're going to make this work. So what I want to do is I am going to place the hook, um, looking at the wrong side here, on the right side of my zipper, okay, over here. And I want to place it so that this edge right here on the hook, this very farthest curve of the hook, is in line with the center of the zipper. Okay, so it's going to be placed, I don't even know if you can see, kind of like this where the very center of the zipper right here is also the center of that hook. So let me go ahead and get this stitched on first and then we'll deal with the little loop. So I'm thinking that somehow my zipper placement isn't right because Remember when I was first comparing my zipper to that opening and I said, well, it looks like I have about an inch and a quarter from the top of the zipper to the cut edge of the fabric. And somehow, I think maybe I moved that dot down here or something at one point because I should be having some space between the top of my zipper and where the folded edge of my facing is that this hook should go to. And instead of that, I'm having to put my hook directly behind the stopper of my zipper, you know, which is, it'll work. It's fine. It's just not what it should be. So um, if you see this and it's like, I've got my zip, my hook right behind my zipper. Technically, I think when I was placing this dot right here and I kept moving it, remember I had to keep moving it to the outside, move it to the inside and all. I think I might have shifted it up about half an inch when it was wearing off. So, I mean, it's not the end of the world, you know, by any stretch, but I think that happened. So just letting you know, be aware. If you follow the pattern exactly, your zipper should actually end right about here so that you have a space up at the top here that you can put your hook in, but you know. Okay, so I've got my hook on. So when you're gonna go put your pants on, first you'll hook it up at the top so that part is secure and then zip it up. And then there you go. So the only thing I still need to do here is make my little hem down at the bottom and I'm going to stitch it up by hand. Actually, I need to turn one of these legs inside out. Now the bottom of this uh, pant pattern kind of flares out and they give you, you can kind of see here how it, it kind of turns out a little bit. So it's cut so that you'll have, I think it's an inch and a quarter hem. Let me see if it's marked on here. Yes, an inch and a quarter hem. Okay. So what I'm going to do is just turn up my bottom and I can kind of see where it's going to buckle and head back out. So I'm just going to turn it up the inch and a quarter and I'm going to hem it up by hand so that my stitches are fairly invisible and press this nice and evenly. Okay, so I've got my little hem up and you can see I just kind of whip stitched it catching a thread or so at a time, but it makes it pretty much invisible on the right side, except for this thread, of course. So here's the thing. I made these pants and I made them up completely without trying them on and without making a, a secondary mock-up, okay? Just because I was curious if that whole system would work. Could I go straight from manipulating my pattern straight to garment that would fit. And these, they're supposed to fit, um, well, they're supposed to fit comfortably. I don't know if you can tell on her because she's wearing black. They're not skin tight. There's a little bit of ease in there. And like I said, when I was making my patterns, there should be at least three inches of ease across here, which would then translate into at least an inch and a half to two in the legs, okay? So we'll see, we'll see. I'm gonna pop these on with a little top so we can see how they fit even up at the waist and let's go. Okay, 
Okay, so I hope you could see my pants are done. I think they fit. Um, I would probably be wearing a longer jacket over this, but I just wanted to put it on with a little short top so that you could see, you know, all the way up to the waistline, and it fits. This is not a style I normally wear because of my ample thighs and everything, but with the changes that I made in the first video on pattern fitting, it works. So there you go. Um, I haven't had a pant with a back zipper in a while. Putting that on, it was like flash to the past, you know, but it's actually very comfortable. So anyway, it works. Very simple pant, you know, no pockets to deal with, no fly to deal with, but it, they look kind of classy, I think. And it's very cold out here. I got snow all over around me, so I'm gonna run back inside. I hope you like the video and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Living my bucolic life, free of the city strife. Horses, chicks, and dogs, they are my neighbors. I cook and sew and spin, and move the horses in to the barn. Then time to move them out again. Red barns, green pastures, beautiful my houses. The view I see each day when I arise. This light pleases me, as it is plain to see. I'm living my bucolic life.